This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. I think I have boss thoughts. I'm always thinking boss. boss. Thoughts. I don't. That's I don't a know new what chapter right there. Boss I, thoughts. I, I don't. Calm down. Yes. I, I don't. I don't know any it's other. A, I don't. I don't know any other language but boss. Boss yeah. language. You know what I'm saying. So when people don't talk in boss to me, I don't mm. know what they're saying. You know what I'm saying. It's a language. It's there's a approach. It's a language. It's like a... like people approach things like bosses and people approach things like workers. A lot of people don't want to be bosses because there's so much responsibility that come with it. Yeah. You understand? They're scared right. of it, and I always say that. You understand what right. I'm saying? Right. But a boss only can think about it in boss terms. So if somebody says they want to get in business, some people might say, oh, I need somebody to give me a job. That's not a boss thought. Right. A boss says, if I want to get in business, my thought is, if I want to get in business, I'm going to create the business. Figure I'm going to buy the do. business. You right. understand what I'm right. saying? Then I'm going to do the business, but I'm not trying to be hired. Man. My approach is always going to be bossy. You know, someone that's not used to being a boss, his, his thought process ain't bossy. Fluent he don't boss. have boss thoughts. Fluent boss. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, fluent and boss. And if you don't talk to me in boss, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> For real. Be like, huh? And people, be be like, right and, and people will think you're an yeah. asshole because they're like, no, that's not how I post right. things. Right. You understand what right. I'm saying? Uh, that's, I'm not celebrating that. Yeah. <laughs> that you got a job. Your boss talk is like, I speak that. Yeah. I well, speak you, that language. You, you can tell when somebody else talks boss. Peace, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I want to get right into the message for today. And it's about assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities. Anything that doesn't pay you is a liability. Anything that pays you or adds value to you is an asset. What do I mean? You purchase a home and you get into a contract, a mortgage to pay for the next 30 years, $1,300 a month. That's not an asset. That's a liability because you're paying out. Eventually, once you finish paying off the house, now you still have to pay taxes. Again, it remains in a liability. If the baller breaks, if the roof leaks, if this happens, this is something that you always got to pay out. It doesn't pay you. The caveat to that is if you purchased a home, a multifamily home, and you have tenants, the tenants now pay those expenditures. And if you're not paying it, it is an asset to you because you own it or control it and you're not putting out. So the roof leaks. Okay, you can take the funds received from the tenants and fix the roof. If the baller goes out, you can take the money received from the tenants and fix the baller. The taxes need to be paid. Take the money you're getting from the tenants, pay the taxes. You're not putting it out. You understand? So asset liabilities, you got to understand that and you got to see it through. If you have a bank account, you can call it free checking, However, there's an annual service charge or there's a monthly service charge. It's free checking, meaning you, know, you can write as many checks as you want. You can go online or you can go down to the branch and you can deal with the, the tellers in person, what have you. you know, these benefits that come with having a bank account. However, if you're paying $14 a month, $8 a month in fees, that is money you're paying out. That is in liability. That is not an asset. You have a light bill, gas bill, telephone bill, phone bill. Anything you put out is not an asset. It's a liability. Am I driving home the point? Am I? Okay, good. So young folks, young folks, young folks, young folks. When spending all that money on sneakers, clothes, makeup, these things may add beauty, may add notoriety to you because your friends may not have the same quality stuff. Your friends may not be able to afford the things that you're, you, know, you, may, you may be purchasing. And they may look nice on you very well, very well. But those are liabilities because it's not adding to your net worth 
in the long run. Now, there's a caveat to that too. If you resell your sneakers, if you hold them as collector's items and you let them grow in value that way and you sell them at a later period, okay, that's an asset. But most of these things depreciate. They, clothing is from fabric that deteriorates over time. If it gets soiled, it won't be the same quality or the same, it won't carry the same desire as it would if it was brand new. So a lot of the clothes you're buying, you're wearing. You're not buying it and holding it in the, uh, in the sense of going to resell it or hold it until the value of it jumps up. So be mindful of these things. Uh, I was young and I bought things when I was young. I didn't have the mindset that I have now. And if you're watching this video now, you're probably curious to know what are some things that you could do differently than your parents, uncles, aunts, or people that came before you did. Because had I've known what I know then, what I know now, a lot of things would be so very different. So if you're listening to this video, watching this video, you know, or you have an idea of what you would like to do, but don't know what direction to take. You're looking for advice. So I'm here at Brownsville, here to give you some advice. College education, is that an asset or a liability? Judging from what you were just learning from the beginning of this video. So you go to college, staying on, dorm, on, on campus, you're paying room and board, you're paying book fees and dorm fees, you're paying, you're paying, you're paying. It's not paying you. It's setting you up so that in the future you can have a better opportunity to have a better paying job to eventually pay off that debt that you just accumulated or not just accumulated, but you've accumulated years prior. College degrees are not an asset. They are liabilities. There are some good assets and there are some good liabilities. I kind of jumped out the window with that point because now I got to come up with some good liabilities. So prior to, or by the end of this video, if I haven't put it in the description up here or posted some links up here, maybe I'll put it below in the description, some good liabilities. Because you go out and you purchase a vehicle. That vehicle is a liability when you drive it off the lot because it's depreciating and you have to pay for it. Meaning you got to put gas in it. You got to keep up the, the maintenance on the vehicle. Get a flat tire, you got to pay to get that fixed. If you're using that vehicle for Uber or Lyft, Grubhub, you know, one of those services, that vehicle could be a asset. If what you're making, utilizing that video, pays for the upkeep, the gas, flat tire here and there, the insurance, maybe even the financing costs, then that is an asset because you're controlling it or you own it. You want to own nothing. And remember this term, own nothing, control everything. That vehicle does not have to be in your name for you to still operate it or use it. Do not get into the habit of wanting everything in your name. Oh, this is mine, 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 mine. You don't need to boast about what is yours when you are using it, when you have access to it. When you're growing up with your parents, that apartment isn't yours, but you live there. You can use the bathroom when you want. You can go in the refrigerator and you can go and use the stove. You can use it to your will or to your heart's desire. You're not paying the rent. You're not paying the mortgage. You're not, you know, paying light bill or gas bill. You have use of it. So when you do it, ownership incurs liability, but you don't want to own it. You want to control it. 
And even when you control it, you still may have some liability attached to it. But if you structure things properly, whereas the liability, i.e. that car, that house, is turning around or turned around to make money for you as opposed to take money out of you, then you've turned that into an asset. It is no longer a liability. You working at a job. You're an employee of Walmart. And the IRS takes money out your check every pay period. Is that an asset or liability? You're paying out. They're taking money. They never, they weren't with, they weren't with you shooting in the gym, but yet they are eating off of you. They're leeching off of you. So anything that you pay out is a liability. Anything that you take in or don't have to expend energy on is an asset. Try to accumulate assets. If you work as an employee and you get paid with Federal Reserve notes, cash, you know, direct deposit, why not look into buying gold and silver? Gold and silver, if you purchase today, in five years, 10 years, even next year, because the prices keep going up, that asset that you just purchased that you're not paying any money out on anymore is only growing and benefit for you. It's an asset that you made a minor investment now that now is going to reap rewards as it ages for you. The dollar bill that you got paid from your employer, the dollar today can get you two bags of chips. Each bag is 50 cents. The dollar when I was growing up got me four bags of chips. So those 25 cent bags of chips is now 50 cents. Now, in 10 years, that 50 cent bag, or less than 10 years, that 50 cent bag is now gonna be the dollar bag. Same size, same quantity. So your dollar is losing value over time. Gold and silver increases value over time. So what should you, could you put your money into? Or what investments can you do? How can you accumulate assets? Take a portion of your money every pay period and buy silver or buy gold coins. 999 pure silver, 999 believe pure gold. Purchase these things. You can buy a uh, one true one troy ounce, I believe is what the uh, the the weight or measure. One troy ounce for twenty one dollars. A coin, twenty one dollars. In ten years, that coin is going to be like a hundred dollars. So that dollar bill that you had in 10, 20 years is going to be worth thirty nine cents on a dollar, or worth thirty nine cents compared to it being a full dollar. So that precious metal, that silver, that gold is going up. That dollar is going down. Okay? Assets and liability. I tell my children as they were transitioning from teen into young adult, meaning they were leaving the teens at 17, 18 and joining adulthood, 18, 19, 20. I tell them, you want to be an asset and not a liability, to me at least. And you want to be that to everybody else. You don't want to be a liability to someone where they have to support you, that they have to pay your bills or take care of you. I've, took, I've taken care of my children for the first 19 years of their life. After 19, the ties are not cut, but they're very severely decreased. So grocery money, educational money, they're actually not buying your car. Although 
if you are in a position where you need a car and it will help you, it will be a beneficial for you to have one, you know, I help you with the necessities, I will. But you need to be an asset and not a liability. So as long as I'm paying out, you are a liability to me. But as long as you are growing in wealth and you don't need much or any upkeep, you're an asset. So you should try to be an asset to your parents and be an asset to yourself, asset to your spouse, to your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Okay? So I hope this touched somebody in a good way. I hope you learned something from this and look more into assets and liabilities and know that if you do consider buying that house, if you deal with the first home or if you get involved with the first home buyer program, whereas the government assists you with your first home purchase, your first, your first home purchase does not have to be a one family house or a condominium. You can invest in a multi-family building or a multi-family house, a three-family house or a multi-unit, like a six apartment unit building. Go for that. Fix your credit or improve your credit. So now you can use your credit for the down payment. Using your credit for the down payment to purchase that multi-family property, more than one. Now, if you invest in a building that already has a rent roll, meaning tenants already. There are six tenants in that building. You purchase the building. The tenants with their rent or the rent payments now pay the mortgage off. You don't pay anything. You can even move into one of those units and stay there rent free and never pay rent for the rest of your life. Asset liability. So Look into getting a multifamily building. Use the first home buyer privilege, I'll call it, or benefit to help offset some of that cost. Use credit. You don't have to build up cash. Use credit. Build a business. Apply with business credit business credit you get more money from. So if you got a $50,000 card, that $50,000 can go towards an even bigger, because it's all about making pay. If you get a building that already has rent roll, a lot of the prerequisites that a bank is looking for, meaning if you buy a single family home, they want to make sure you have a good job and you're going to be able to pay that mortgage for 30 years. But if you get into a multifamily building that has a rent roll already, meaning it has established tenants, it means you ain't got to come out of your pocket. So the criteria of you having this great job is not necessary because you got tenants that are making the payments. Get it? It's a different ball game when you know the game and you know the math. So you don't have to come up with all these letters. You don't have to come up with all these documents to prove this and prove that. No, you just need that down payment. And that down payment can come in a form of your credit card. You get that credit card, you drop that credit card on the desk, you make that payment. Now you own that piece of property or your business owns it because you want to own nothing, control everything, but your business owns it. And now the tenants are paying Marshall Enterprises. Not Robert Marshall, they're paying Marshall Enterprises. And Marshall Enterprises is taking care of the, the upkeep of the building. Asset and liability and different strategies of how you can attain that or how, how you can acquire assets and avoid liabilities. So I hope this helps somebody. I uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please, please click like, share. And there's a little bell up there. If you click that, every time I put out a new video, you'll get a notification. All right, so in closing, please leave me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. I appreciate your, your feedback. Now, thank you. Asset, liability. 
if only if you only knew then what you knew now, things would be very different, right? And if you're young now, you don't know much. Guess what? Figure out some of these strategies so you don't make the same mistakes your parents made. All right? Peace.